Welcome back to our channel. Today, we come together with a mix of emotions as we commemorate the life of a truly extraordinary monarch. Queen Elizabeth II, Europe's longest reigning sovereign, has peacefully passed away at the age of 96 at their cherished residence, Balmoral. For an astounding 70 years, she graced the throne, becoming a symbol of strength and continuity for the British people. Throughout her life, she lived in an unforgiving glare of the public eye, navigating the challenges and triumphs that come with being a queen. While Queen Elizabeth II remains one of the most recognizable figures on our planet, there are countless aspects of the King of England that remain shrouded in mystery. Join us as we embark on an enlightening journey to uncover 25 things the world never knew about Queen Elizabeth II. Number 1. The Queen owned more than 100 horses when she passed away. Throughout her life, Queen Elizabeth II was a devoted equestrian enthusiast, amassing a remarkable collection of over 100 horses before her passing in 2022. Her passion for horse racing proved to be not only a source of joy, but also a lucrative venture, as she is believed to have amassed an impressive 8.7 million pounds in prize money over the years. The year 2016 stands out as a particularly successful one for the Queen's racing endeavors, with her horses earning a staggering total of £560,000 in prize money. However, this record was later surpassed in 2021 as her horses achieved an outstanding feat, securing a £584,000 bonus in winnings. Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, also found value in the equestrian world, utilizing the prize money for his own victorious race horses. He contributed to the construction of the walled garden on the Sandringham estate. Number 2. She met her future fiancé when she was 8 years old. Although the two regularly participated in various events during their childhood, it was not until 1934 that Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip officially met for the first time. This significant meeting took place at the wedding celebration of Princess Marina of Greece and Prince George, Duke of Kent. Number 3. Her crown is broken Queen Elizabeth II did wear a tiara on her wedding day in 1947, and it was indeed the same tiara that was originally made for her grandmother, Queen Mary, in 1919. This exquisite heirloom piece held significant sentimental value and was chosen as a symbol of family heritage and tradition. As the hairdresser carefully secured the delicate veil in place with a crown, an unforeseen mishap occurred. The antique metal frame of the tiara unexpectedly broke. However, Queen Mother, known for her quick wit and composure, reassured her daughter with a calm remark, suggesting that there were alternative crowns available for the occasion and that they had ample time to address the situation. Number 4. Her wedding dress is made by a famous designer in England. Among the distinguished British fashion designers, Sir Norman Bishop Hartnell stands out as a prominent figure renowned for his remarkable creations tailored for the royal ladies. His artistic prowess shines through in some of the Queen's most iconic dresses, including those for momentous occasions such as her coronation and wedding ceremonies. Sir Norman Hartnell's association with the British royal family began formally in 1938, when he was officially appointed as a tailor for them. From that point onwards, he played a significant role in shaping the image of the royal style, leaving an enduring impact that resonates even in contemporary times. In addition to his works for Queen Elizabeth II, Hartnell was also the mastermind behind the elegant dress of Princess Margaret, the younger sister of the Queen. Furthermore, his creative flair extended to designing a substantial portion of the Queen's mother wardrobe, cementing his position as a designer cherished by the royal family. Number 5. The Queen Falls Back on Christmas Day While we may have imagined the Queen's carnival celebration to be formal affair, 
It appears that the royal family's Christmas at Sandringham shares some similarities with our own festive gatherings. Though of course our mishaps might involve overindulgence, whereas the Queen's experience was a bit different. During one Christmas at her Sandringham estate in Norfolk, an amusing incident occurred. A servant mistakenly pulled out the Queen's chair before she was fully prepared to sit, resulting in a rather unexpected moment. Her Majesty, not one to shy away from fun, found himself blushing as she fell. Thankfully, the Queen emerged unharmed from the fall, and her sense of humor remained intact. As she gracefully sat back down, it was a candid reminder that even royalty can encounter light-hearted mishaps during their celebrations. Number 6. Prince George Calls Her Gan Gan In a heartwarming revelation, Kate Middleton shared that her eldest son, Prince George, affectionately refers to his great-grandmother as Gan Gan. As reported by Pop Sugar, the endearing title of Gan Gan has been a cherished term used by generations of royals to address their beloved great-grandmothers. Number 7 the number of letters she received is a huge number. Annually, an astonishing 70,000 letters find their way to the Queen's desk, showcasing the profound impact she has on people's lives. On a typical day, Her Majesty receives an impressive 200 to 300 letters, each carrying heartfelt messages from well-wishers, admirers, and individuals seeking her attention. In the midst of this substantial correspondence, the Queen herself takes an active role in selecting a portion of the letters to read personally. After going through the chosen letters, she delegates the task of responding to her dedicated staff, ensuring that each message receives the attention it deserves. According to the royal family's official website, the Queen's daily correspondence holds significant importance. One of her private secretaries plays a pivotal role in presenting her with a glimpse of the letter she receives, demonstrating the Queen's genuine interest in connecting with people. Number 8. She has 30 godchildren. Queen Elizabeth II's godchildren hold a significant place in her heart, with a total of 30 individuals graced with this special honor. Among her esteemed godchildren are noteworthy figures such as Guy Neville, the son of Lord Rupert Neville, and Lady Camilla Wallop, Prince Theodore of Greece, daughter of Constantine II, Prince Anne Marie of Denmark, James Ogilby, the son of Sir Angus Ogilby, and Princess Her Royal Highness Alexandra of Great Britain. Number 9. The Craziest Gifts As a beloved figure, the Queen receives a plethora of gifts, some of which are truly extraordinary, like the animals she has been bestowed with over the years. Her collection of remarkable animal gifts includes a diverse array of creatures, ranging from majestic horses and cows to fascinating elephants, kangaroos, swans, crocodiles, sloths, and even powerful jaguars. According to the British Monarchy's website, a few notable animal gifts bestowed upon the Queen include two turtles, presented to her during a tour of the Seychelles in 1972, symbolizing her global connections. In 1972, to commemorate her silver wedding anniversary, the President of Cameroon gifted Her Majesty a magnificent seven-year-old male elephant named Jumbo, symbolizing strength and grandeur. The Queen's royal visits to Canada also saw her receive unique animal presents, such as two black beavers showcasing the country's rich wildlife heritage. As a gesture of appreciation, Her Majesty often donates some of these cherished animals to the London Zoo, where they find a new home and continue to captivate visitors from around the world. Number 10. The Queen uses her wallet to signal her staff. A constant companion by her side, the Queen is rarely seen without her handbag, and its significance goes beyond carrying personal belongings. 
Her Majesty cleverly utilizes her handbag and wallet as discreet signals to communicate with her attentive staff. According to well-known accounts, the Queen's handbag serves as a subtle way for her to indicate her intentions. Placing her handbag on the table conveys a clear message. She wishes to depart the current location within the next five minutes. This discreet signal allows her staff to make necessary arrangements for her departure without drawing attention. Similarly, when the queen places her handbag on the floor during a conversation, it is believed to signify her desire to be discreetly rescued from the exchange. This subtle gesture conveys her wish to gracefully exit the discussion without the need for direct communication. Number 11. She Speaks Fluent French From a young age, Queen Elizabeth II received tutelage in French and Belgian, acquiring proficiency in the language. During her visits to French-speaking countries, Her Majesty frequently showcases her linguistic skills by conversing in French. In a surprising and impressive moment, she delivered a speech in French at the 2014 National Banquet, leaving many in awe. The Queen's ability to speak French has proven to be a valuable asset, particularly when engaging with ambassadors and heads of state from speaking English nations with diplomatic ties to France. Additionally, during her visits to French-speaking regions in Canada, her fluency in the language enhances her interactions with local communities. Number 12. She has a poet of her own. As part of a royal tradition, the Queen holds a Distinguished Poet Laureate, an honorary appointment bestowed by the monarch of the United Kingdom. Notably, in 2009, Carol Ann Duffy made history as the first female poet to receive the prestigious recognition. In her role as Poet Laureate, she crafts poetic verses for significant royal occasions, such as the momentous wedding of Prince William and Kate Middleton as well as the 6th anniversary of the Queen's coronation. Number 13. She owns up 129 portraits of herself. Throughout her remarkable reign, the Queen has posed for numerous official portraits, spanning an impressive 129 years since assuming the throne. Renowned artists such as Florence Pietro and Igoni have immortalized her in their artistic masterpieces. In a notable departure from traditional portraits, artist Chris Levin crafted a groundbreaking three-dimensional portrait of Her Majesty in 2012. Capturing the Queen's likeness in portraits is no ordinary task, as artist John Wanacott, who painted the royal family in 2000, attested. The Queen's dynamic nature and active engagements require artists to adapt their techniques to accommodate her lively presence. Unlike stationary subjects, the Queen's busy schedule demands a flexible approach from artists who must skillfully capture her essence while she fulfills her royal duties. Number 14. Weird Alarm In a distinctive morning tradition, the Queen forsakes the use of conventional alarm clock. Instead, she awakens to the enchanting sound of bagpipes played outside her window each day at 9 a.m. The skilled musician responsible for this royal wake-up call holds the steam title of Piper to the Sovereign. Number 15. Big Fan of Musicals During their visit to the UK in 2009, Barack and Michelle Obama presented the Queen with a thoughtful gift. An iPod. Contrary to the notion that it might have been overlooked, the iPod has not merely gathered dust. In fact, the Queen's affinity for music extends beyond the realm of formality and protocol. According to the insights of royal expert Ingrid Seward, the Queen is an enthusiastic fan of various music genres. Among her favorite musical delights are beloved musicals, traditional chants, and soul-steering Scottish ballads. Her diverse taste also extends to modern tunes, including songs by the Beach Boys, with a special fondness for their hit track, California Girls. Number 16. Shoe Designer 
Throughout her reign, the queen has been renowned for donning various shoe styles crafted by Anello and Davide, esteemed shoemakers. Interestingly, Stuart Parvin, the queen's trusted dressmaker for over a decade, divulged a fascinating detail. Her Majesty has never had to endure the discomfort of blisters when acquiring new footwear. The secret lies in a meticulous practice undertaken by a dedicated employee. Before the queen wears a new pair of shoes, this employee assumes the responsibility of breaking them in, wearing cotton ankle socks, and treading on soft carpets. The employee ensures that the shoes become supple and comfortable, sparing the queen from any discomfort during her public engagements. The practice of breaking in shoes is not uncommon, and it is known that high-profile individuals, including members of the royal family, often take measures to ensure footwear is comfortable before wearing it for official engagements. Number 17. Memorable Portrait Photo In a magnificent tribute to her momentous 65-year reign, famously known as the Sapphire Celebration, Queen Elizabeth II unveiled a breathtaking portrait originally captured in 2014 by esteemed British photographer David Bailey. On this significant day, the Queen chose to commemorate the occasion in a private manner, as it holds a bittersweet significance. It also marks the 65th anniversary of her father's passing. Number 18. The Royal Train is unlike any other. The Royal Train boasts a luxurious interior, complete with private bedrooms, a spacious living room, a dining table accommodating six guests, and a well-appointed office for the Queen herself. To ensure the utmost comfort during travel, advanced secondary air suspension technology is employed, guaranteeing a smooth and pleasant journey for all passengers. Notably, the conductor takes special care during the morning hours, ensuring a gentle and unhurried ride at 7.30 a.m so the queen's bath water remains undisturbed, a thoughtful detail befitting royalty. Even the most intricate aspects of the train's design showcase the royal dedication to elegance and sophistication. The living room chair crafted with exquisite attention to detail features hand-stitched velvet cushions enveloping passengers with sumptuous comfort. Moreover, the queen's personal touch is evident from every angle as her pillow is adorned with delicate lace, embellished with a discreet royal cipher, reflecting her regal identity. Number 19. She acted in plays when she was young. The allure of grandeur and theatrically captivated Princess Elizabeth during her teenage years. Amidst the backdrop of the Second World War, she found delight in taking part in numerous pantomime plays. A rare glimpse into her past reveals a 15-year-old Princess Elizabeth portraying a character of Prince Florizel alongside her sister Margaret in 1941 production of Cinderella. Number 20. Love Seals a King During her teenage years, Princess Elizabeth's heart was captured by Prince Philip, a Greek prince and her third cousin. An enchanting love story began to unfold between them. When Queen Elizabeth II assumed the throne in 1953, it marked a historic moment in British history as she became the first heir to the throne who was already married at the time of her ascension. This departure from tradition made her reign unique and groundbreaking. Traditionally, even pre-Elizabeth queens did not marry until after their coronation, provided they were not already married. Queen Elizabeth II's marriage to Prince Philip before her coronation demonstrated her willingness to break conventional boundaries. This decision showcased her commitment to love and family, even in the face of royal protocols. Beyond her trailblazing role as a married heir to the throne, Queen Elizabeth II embraced the responsibilities of both royalty and motherhood. As a beloved royal figure, she juggled her duties as a working mother, skillfully fulfilling her role as a queen while raising her family. Number 21. Terrible Year 
Similar to numerous parents, the King of England has experienced both joys and challenges in her journey of raising children. Flashback to 1992, a year that was famously nicknamed Anna's Horribilis, or Terrible Year. During this period, the monarchy faced catastrophic events, including a devastating fire that struck Windsor Castle. Additionally, the breakdown of the marriage of her children, namely Prince Charles, Prince Andrew, and Princess Anne, adding to the trying times. Mentioning the breakdown of her children's marriages acknowledges the personal challenges of the royal family faced during that period. In 1992, Prince Charles and Princess Diana formally separated and Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson announced their separation. Additionally, Princess Anne went through a divorce from her first husband, Captain Mark Phillips. Number 22. The Serpent Pranked the Corgi Dog Renowned for her sharp wit and playful demeanor, the Queen's sense of humor knows no bounds. However, when it concerns her beloved corgi dogs, she displays no tolerance for jests. A noteworthy incident occurred in 1999 when a servant decided to play a prank on her pets. The monarch, unamused by the act, took decisive action and demoted the individual responsible for the mischievous deed. As documented in the book Amazing and Extraordinary Facts, Royal Family Life, published in 2012, the servant had committed the offense by adding whiskey and gin to the dog's food, aiming to play a practical joke. The queen, ever attentive to the well-being of her cherished canines, promptly addressed the matter to safeguard the health and safety of her royal companion. The corgis led an indulgent lifestyle under the queen's care, enjoying meals of fresh rabbit meat served in silver bowls, a testament to the royal treatment they received. They experienced a lenient upbringing, rarely facing reprimands for their behavior. However, this leniency seemed to embolden the corgis, leading to instances where they bit courtiers, policemen, guards, and remarkably even their old regal owner, the queen herself. Number 23. The queen was injured and required three stitches. In 1991, a notable incident occurred involving the queen and her beloved corgis. Known for her affection for this breed, the queen found herself in an unfortunate situation when she attempted to break up the fight between her eight pets. During this attempt, she received a heavy cut on her hand, requiring three stitches to treat the wound. The incident took place on the grounds of Windsor Castle, where her eight corgis clashed with the queen's two other pets. The situation called for immediate action, and the Queen's mother, chauffeur John Collins, bravely intervened to help quell the altercation. This involvement in stopping the battle resulted in him having to go to the hospital for a tattoo shot. Despite the unexpected turn of events, arrangements were swiftly made to ensure the Queen's well-being and continued care. The Queen's stable at Windsor were equipped with updated medical facilities, enabling her to receive treatment and remain at the castle during her recovery. Number 24. The Queen used to have no control over her anger. As recounted by the Queen's former tutor, the young monarch harbored a strong dislike for her French lessons during her childhood. Known for her spirited nature, she was occasionally described as being hot-tempered a trait that she learned to manage over time. A particular incident at a family home in Windsor stands out in the tutor's memory, shedding light on the Queen's challenging experience with a certain French teacher. According to the tutor, this lady tasked with teaching the Queen French employed a forceful approach that involved relentless drills and exercise aiming at improving the Queen's French language skills. Endless columns of verbs were written down, and the young queen was made to speak in French, an exercise that she found burdensome and unenjoyable. During one memorable session when the queen was engrossed with learning French, an unexpected incident happened. Lilibet, fed up with the violent measures, picked out a large silver decorative inkwell and, without saying anything, tossed it over her own head. The tutor vividly recalls the moment ink accidentally spilled on the queen's face and turned her blonde locks. Unexpected shade of blue. 
Number 25. Not everyone is grieving her death. The passing of the Queen holds immense significance for millions of people worldwide, as she was a remarkable leader and a truly exceptional figure. However, it is essential to acknowledge that her death elicited different reactions from various groups. While many mourn her loss, some individuals expressed their discontent with the extensive media coverage of her passing. Some First Peoples perceive her as a symbol of old colonial oppression and mistreatment, leading to feelings of anger and resentment. Others felt marginalized, believing that their dissenting opinions were not adequately represented and sometimes disregarded. Those who hold dissenting views deserve to be heard, and their differing opinions should be acknowledged without the risk of being invalidated or ignored. Every individual has the right to express their thoughts and feelings in a society that values open dialogue and understanding. Despite the differing actions to her passing, it is undeniable that the Queen's impact on the world was extraordinary. She served as a shining example of an individual's power to effect positive change and leave an indelible mark on history. How do you feel after learning this interesting and wonderful things from Queen Elizabeth? How many things do you know in here? Please comment, like, share, and subscribe to receive notifications of upcoming videos on the same topic. Thanks for watching!